And on this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Elenco Resistance Substitution Box RS500, also known as a Decade Box. Now, this is a very interesting device because whether you're working with electronics as a hobby or for a living, it allows us to simulate different resistances, which can come in very handy, perhaps if we wanted to test if our bolt meter was working correctly as far as measuring resistance, we can put a resistance number on here, test it with the bolt meter, and confirm if the bolt meter is still good. But this device can also be used in the testing and development of electronic devices or troubleshooting an existing device because we can simulate the resistance and confirm if that is going to fix the issue before we actually go out and buy the part for it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how it works and I'm also going to test it out to see how well it actually performs. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I place a link in the description down below to this box in case you need to get one for yourself. And the box enclosure is all plastic. I wouldn't say it's super heavy duty, but it definitely feels sturdy. And like all measurement and test equipment, it should be handled with care. On the back of the box, we get rubber feet, which also conceal the holes that have the screws in case we wanted to get inside of this unit. And to connect this box to a device, we get dual four millimeter standard banana jacks. Now the banana jacks also have this little knurl option. I can turn it and then we have an additional hole in case I wanted to feed a wire through there and lock that wire in place or just use it as a standard banana jack and all the resistors on this box are rated at one percent tolerance and the resistors 1 through 40k are rated at one watt so that is all the resistors from here all the way to down here and this last two rows which is the 4k range all the way up to 4 mega ohm range those are rated at half watt and using the box is fairly easy if i wanted to output one ohm i would turn the one ohm switch if I wanted to output 10 ohms, I will turn the 10 ohm switch. But what's really neat is that we can combine the switches to create different resistance readings. If I wanted 110 ohms, I will turn 100 and turn the 10 on, and now we have 110 ohms. If I wanted 70k ohms, I could turn 30k and then the 40k effectively giving me 70k ohms. So we have quite a bit of freedom in creating different resistance readings. Let's try one last one. 5,071 ohms. I'm gonna turn on 2K and 3K, effectively giving me 5,000 ohms. And now I need to get 71. So I'm gonna turn on 40 ohms, 30, that's 70, and then one. So yeah, we have effectively created 5,071 ohms. But now let's test each resistance with the hand tech to see how well they actually measure. And I'll cycle through all of them. And in case you wanna skip this section, feel free to use the bookmarks I placed in the bottom to move to a different chapter in the video. Well, let's also take a look inside of this box. I have already removed the screws. Let's open this guy up. And before we look at the resistors in the front, I do want to show you the solder joints on this PCV and also the size of the traces, which is also what's going to limit the amount of wattage that this box can be used with. It's not only the wattage rating of the resistors, but the traces themselves, what is going to limit how much power we can actually drive through here. And I have removed both of the nuts that secured the banana jacks to the rear of this assembly. I'm going to go ahead and separate this now. And this is actually a pretty simple device when you think about it. Every resistor has been placed on series and every resistor has a switch right next to it, which effectively shorts it out when it's on the on position. So right now all the switches are on the on position. So we are bypassing all the resistors. But when I throw a switch into the off position, now the resistor is no longer shorted out. It becomes part of the circuit. So in this case, this resistor of one ohm becomes the value that is produced by this box. 
The other thing we can notice on here is the size of the resistors, which we know are rated at one watt, but the last two rows are rated at half a watt, and you can see that the size of the resistor got in smaller, but also you'll notice some clever packaging, because as you can see, this resistor right here is for the 10K setting. However, we have two more rows. For example, this one's 100K, and this is one mega ohm, and we have the resistors, both of them packed in this area, obviously to reduce the size of the board, Otherwise, the next resistor would have been on here. And I do want to show you in the back how they are connected together on one side, but they are separate as far as the other, which is very clever in its manufacturing process for reducing the footprint of this overall device. So hopefully this video gave you an idea of how the resistance substitution box works. Now for its price, I think it's really hard to beat the value that you get for it. There are more heavy duty versions of this box out there, but they're gonna cost a lot more. So I think for anybody who's working at home as a hobby playing with electronics, even somebody who's doing some minor repairs, like I said, for a living, it's gonna make sense to have some inexpensive device like this, that if it gets damaged or worn out, you'll toss it out and buy another one. So so remember i put a link to this little guy in the description down below if you have any other questions regarding this please put that in the comments also if you find any part of this video helpful hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as i have a lot more cool products reviews for you guys coming up thank you guys for watching and as always i'll see you on the next one